Hi, it's Dwyer, <clears throat> gamblersadvisory.com, keeping it free, .blogspot.com, both free sites. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Yesterday, something happened to me that just um, shook me a little bit. I was uh, leaving court with a client. We had just uh, settled a case. And uh, the client was going to come into some money, right? We'll say six figures worth of money. I'll leave it vague and ambiguous. So he and I were talking. The client's a very savvy guy, right? He went to a very prestigious university and uh, both undergrad and graduate school. And I thought, you know, let me talk some investment ideas with him. So I was just talking with him about what he might consider doing with the uh, money he was going to receive. And I mentioned some cryptocurrencies. And the client cut me off, right? He said, look, all he's hearing in the mainstream media is that Bitcoin, right? All cryptocurrencies became Bitcoin. Bitcoin was a bubble. Right, and that he was going to stay on the sidelines until this thing sorted itself out. Right now, all I'm saying to you is that one of the most important things I have learned in life is to believe in the market standard, not the PhD standard. Right, just understand if. PhDs were so adept, so advanced in their investment strategies. You wouldn't have the phenomenon called starving PhD students, right? They would have the intelligence. They would be able to just gain their investments. So they always had a financial windfall. But what you'll find out is regardless of the degree of the individual, right? And I say this as someone myself who has a degree from one of these well-known universities, right? Um, regardless of the degree of the individual, that doesn't connote. You shouldn't assume any kind of dexterity when it comes to making investment decisions. Put another way, there are a lot of poor people holding advanced degrees from major universities here in the United States, right? There are a lot of very smart people, very smart people, who have been very unwise in their investment decisions, right? Let's go one step further. The people reporting the news. Many of them work for corporations. Many of them are told what to say. Sometimes these corporations uh, that broadcast news are heavily influenced by their advertisers, right? You're putting your career at risk. If you, you know, um, in a segment sponsored by, let's say, Company X, go on record on the broadcast as saying that Company X's stock is overvalued. That company X is antiquated technology. Right? That digital, updated replacements to company X's product are already on the market, are cheaper, and are faster, and better serve the consumer than company X's goods. Right? So, as I looked at my client, who I had no doubt had a big IQ, right? I just thought to myself, wow, how crazy is this? He's going to wait until what? Bitcoin gets to $50,000 a coin? He's going to wait until what? The mainstream press agrees that Bitcoin is the next step in the evolution of money? That 
the whims of politicians and central bankers that govern the prices of fiat currencies might not necessarily be a good thing to the value of a currency and that a decentralized cryptocurrency might actually be superior he's gonna wait until what that becomes society's consensus before he invests in the technology you snooze you lose I'm sure many people watching these videos that I make on cryptocurrency privately realize that they're becoming much richer than their friends much richer than their social group because this really is part of a bigger moment in the development of money right you already know that financial technology <coughs> has many consumers especially in Asia doing a lot of their transactions buying coffee etc without taking out a credit card right using their smartphone you already know that we're moving away from paper currency I'm sure many people here who only use government issued fiat currency know themselves that they hardly ever touch a physical bill that they're doing most of their financial transactions using a credit card right well understand that's the world we're in we're moving away from paper currency so given that some of these cryptocurrencies have features that serve the marketplace for example lower transaction costs to send money to underserved markets like let's say Romania or Africa right the price is cheaper than Western Union all other things being equal why wouldn't that technology take the market by storm just off the price advantage you add in the technological advancement in other words I don't have to go to a Western Union shop to you know buy some money order or to buy a money wire I can literally just do things from my laptop send money to Romania send money to Africa given the increased convenience given the increased speed why wouldn't the cryptocurrency be welcomed by the market and when you see the market embracing cryptocurrency as is happening right now right total market cap of all cryptos now exceeds 500 billion dollars right why would you then decide well you know what I heard some corporate journalists on TV say it's a bubble let me stay on the sidelines and not actually examine the technology so let me say this to those of you who actually do invest who actually don't wait until there is a general consensus in the world validating the technology right let me just point out a few cryptocurrencies that you want to consider because understand some are exploding in price but when you look at the underlying technology you understand that there are very similar cryptocurrencies out there that the market hasn't discovered yet that once the market discovers could also explode in price right so we've seen ethereum explode in price right ethereum now has the second biggest market cap of any cryptocurrency as I make this video the price of ethereum now is over six hundred and sixty dollars a coin right ethereum is a platform on which you can base other coins right you can do things with ethereum you can build on the ethereum blockchain you can have smart contracts using the ethereum platform you could do all of that 
with the fork of Ethereum, Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is out there, folks. It's a fraction of the price of Ethereum. Right now, you're getting Ethereum Classic for $30, right? Again, one is over $600. The other is down at $30. Understand the supply right now out in the marketplace is about the same, right? I think Ethereum Classic is worth a look. Let me just point out, too, that I'm just telling you what I'm doing, right? Keep in mind, I own almost all of the cryptocurrency that I'm going to discuss here. But you understand the value plays, right? You understand the cryptocurrencies that right now aren't being fully recognized by the markets. So, in the vein of Ethereum, right, a platform on which you could build other coins, you have EOS. That's selling at a little over $8 a coin, right? That's experienced explosive growth, but just understand, if EOS has the capability it claims to have, which is far beyond Ethereum, the $8 is the tip of the iceberg, right? This time next year, EOS could well be up where Ethereum is right now, and that's over $660 a coin. You also have NEO, right, which is selling at less than $50 a coin. According to reports, the creators of NEO are very good friends with the Chinese Prime Minister. Think about it. Now, Zcash has been exploding, right? That's a privacy centric cryptocurrency, right, that uses the zero proof protocol. But just understand that there is a fork off of Zcash called Zencash, which also gives you privacy. Zencash is launching smart nodes, which would give you node income. An argument can be made that some of the technology in Zencash is superior to Zcash. Here again, Zencash, literally a fork of Zcash, is selling at a fraction of Zcash's price. You want to take a look at it. What about the granddaddy of them all? Bitcoin, right? Big selling point to Bitcoin is its limited supply. Over the long term, it's going to be deflationary. Folks, you get all of that. <coughs> Literally all of that with the fork off Bitcoin, at least one of them, Bitcoin Cash, right? You also get it with Bitcoin Gold, quite frankly, but I'm more enamored of Bitcoin Cash because you get the ability to make micro payments with Bitcoin Cash because the transaction fees for Bitcoin Cash are a small fraction of the transaction fees for Bitcoin. So here's where critics in my opinion, mislead the public. Peter Schiff, a hero of mine, right? Hero of mine, is going around talking about how Bitcoin has a very high transaction cost. Can we agree that Bitcoin is only one cryptocurrency? <laughs> one cryptocurrency in the universe? Understand, Schiff doesn't talk about Bitcoin Cash when he tries to make his point that Bitcoin's untenable as a method of transactions. Well, understand, Bitcoin Cash is more tenable, it's cheaper than using credit cards. Think it through. Let's go further. You know that Dash is a fork off of Bitcoin, right? Folks, you could do Dash transactions faster than you could do credit card transactions. Did you also know that Dash gives you privacy? 
Your credit card does not. Right? Some family member can literally grab your credit card statement and know where you spent that credit card. They can't do that with Dash. You're getting the kind of anonymity that you get with fiat currency. Only with Dash, here again, only a set number of Dash will ever be minted. So you're getting that anonymity <coughs> without all this central bank inflation and having the huge debt attached to your currency. Right? Let's talk about Dash. You know, there's a fork off Dash. That's a lot cheaper than Dash. Now, Dash is my personal favorite, but understand, if you want to run a masternode, and if you don't have the money to set up a Dash masternode, did you know you could run a masternode using PIVX? Did you know that some parts of PIVX's technology is superior to Dash? Right? PIVX actually incorporates the zero proof protocol. You can do completely anonymous transactions on PIVX. Transactions that have even greater anonymity than you get from Dash. Now, we're in the digital world when we talk about this, so understand what I'm saying here. With Dash, you get anonymity. But the idea is that someone with a supercomputer might be able to try to, at great cost, unmix the coin mixing to try to figure out where the money came from and over time might be able to figure out right with a great degree of uncertainty whether money in a particular transaction came from you right now that's dash in other words we're in the theoretical world now not the real world in the real world you have anonymity with Dash, right? In the theoretical world, someone with a supercomputer perhaps maybe might be able to say with, you know, some, you know, 10% degree of probability that some money in a transaction came from you. They can't do that with PIVX. When you convert the PIVX to ZPIV, which is what PIVX allows you to do. Because with ZPIV, you can't follow the transactions at all, even with a high-powered computer. PIVX is selling right now for about $5 a coin. You could set up a PIVX masternode for about $50,000 and have it pay you PIVX every month. Right? By contrast, Dash is selling right now for over $800 a coin. Right? Let's say also you're in a business that doesn't want to pay the small transaction fees associated with some of the best cryptos. Right? Let's say you would prefer, and understand, the fees are so small, they're far less than the credit card fees you're paying. We're talking about superior technology that's not owned by these big banks, right? So let's say that you don't want to spend one one hundredth of a cent on your uh, morning coffee's transaction fees. Let's say you would prefer for that to be free of cost. Did you know that there's a cryptocurrency out there that has zero transaction fees? In the comment section to this video, someone explain to me how MasterCard and Visa are ever going to match this. That cryptocurrency is called IOTA. They don't rely on a blockchain. They actually rely on something called the Tangle. Now you need to Google all of this, 
right? It would take me too long to explain it all in this short video. But just understand, <coughs> IOTA has reached deals with some pretty big players to play a role in the big players use of the transaction free transaction component of IOTA's technology. So, IOTA is spreading like wildfire right now. In terms of market cap, it has the sixth biggest market cap of any cryptocurrency. Its market cap is ahead, for example, of Bitcoin Gold of Monero, of Ethereum Classic, of Dash. Yet a lot of the public has no idea what IOTA is. Again, transaction free, transaction cost free transactions. You can send money to the independent contractor who's helping you on a project without paying even the amount of fees that PayPal charges. Without paying even the reduced transaction fees of Bitcoin Cash and Dash and PIVX. Right? So, just understand, I believe if you're an investor and you're looking for superior technology to invest in, for which you know there's a use in the world. I believe now's the time to look at cryptocurrency. Right? Get acquainted with the technology. Get acquainted with the different coins. Don't rely on corporate journalists giving you some opinion that all cryptocurrency is Bitcoin that there's no other cryptocurrency in the world with any meaningful difference to Bitcoin, and that this might be a bubble. And so you shouldn't take your time investigating Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Zcash, Zencash, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Dash, Pivx, IOTA, EOS, NEO, Right? Now's the time to investigate all of those. I have no doubt many of the people watching this video have made at least half a million dollars. Right? Investing and speculating in cryptocurrency. Now is the time to do so. Don't wait until after the green light goes on with the mainstream media that cost-free transactions might actually be a good thing with a high demand. Let me also say this too. If you, like me, believe that we're headed for some financially tough times, that the debt levels of several countries, right, including the United States of America, including Germany, including Spain, including Italy, major economies, Japan, are simply unsustainable and might eventually lead to increased instability in financial markets, right? With people placing a premium on technology that can help them do advanced Wall Street transactions. Right? Mergers and acquisitions, etc. What I need for people to realize is understand a cryptocurrency like Veritasium is more anti fragile, Nassim Taleb's word, than the current Wall Street establishment. Understand, when you have financial uncertainty, you have companies like Lehman Brothers just disappearing. Right? You have Wall Street going to Washington, D.C., begging for bailouts. 
you have people like Warren Buffett literally lending money to Goldman Sachs. Right? The world crypto is offering you is vastly different. It's unconnected from all the politics. It doesn't have the foolish debt levels of many areas of society. It's more market-based, it's more fluid, it's decentralized. Right? You have decentralization, so you don't have one central point of failure. Right? So I would encourage you to Google and look up Veritasium. In my opinion, it's just a matter of time before Veritasium and other coins, Zcash, Zencash, Dash, get involved in more and more complex transactions. Right? If you're looking for an anti-fragile financial ecosystem, look to cryptocurrency. You're kidding yourself if you look at the current central bank regime. Right? How's Australia doing? How's Japan doing? How's the United States doing? Do you think in your life, under this current regime, current debt levels are ever going to be returned to zero? You think this debt gets paid back with these dollars, right? This yen. Cryptocurrency doesn't have those problems, folks. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. If you get one takeaway from the video, just have it be a thought on which is better. The market standard or the PhD standard. If Janet Yellen is that brilliant, why isn't she a multi-billionaire in her private investments? Why is it that we know Many teachers with PhDs teaching on campuses who are not multi-billionaires, who rely on tuition paid by middle and working class students for their income. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.